Lesson 28, Section 2. Today we'll be introduced to participles, to the perfect participle, and how to translate the perfect participle. Consider the following sentence. Having read the book, he knows how it ends. In blue is what is called a participle, the having read. A participle is a verbal adjective. It comes from a verb, in this case, to read, and it modifies a noun or a pronoun, in this case, I. This, this phrase, having read the book, this participial phrase, is really a long modifier, an adjective, really, of this he, this pronoun he. Usually, participles have explanatory force. So a different way of expressing this, having read the book, he knows how it ends, might be something like this. Since he's read the book, he knows how it ends. Because he's read the book, he knows how it ends. That's usually the force of, of participles. As verbal adjectives, participles in Greek are declined according to case, number, and gender. We don't have to do much in the way of uh, declension when it comes to English participles. All Greek participles are 313 adjectives. We've seen this before. That's where, in the masculine, the, the endings look like third declension endings. In the feminine, they look like first declension endings. And in the neuter, they look like third declension endings. Masculine and neuter are very similar. What follows is the declension of the perfect participle in Greek, this having blank ed. So having read, having learned, having arrived, having given. These are, in English and in Greek, uh, the way we would, we would express the perfect participle. We'll see other participles as well. We're going to start with the perfect. So, papal kos, papal kapas, ha, having stopped. This is the perfect participle in the masculine. We'll start with the masculine and look at the other genders. And we form it, if, if you can't tell, uh, from really the, the 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 perfect stem which we've seen before, we take our normal verb pow all in this case, and we reduplicate that initial consonant to get pe, and then we add a kappa. And in this case, we see really what are unique endings for the perfect participles. We're going to have to learn those, but basically, it's just a question of learning, as with all third declension nouns, the stem, the ot there. So. To get that stem, we drop the os of the genitive singular here. We add pepau kop through, throughout the, the declension. And the singular nominative, uh, actually before that, we're going to add our normal third declension endings. Now we're going to change the singular nominative to pepau kos. Next, we're going to change <clears throat> the dative plural to pepau kosin. That tau is going to get swallowed up by the sigma. And that is effectively the declension of uh, pepal kos, this having stopped, this perfect participle in the masculine. Now for the neuter, uh, we're going to see something very similar. In fact, the genitive and the dative, both singular and plural, are going to be exactly the same. For the singular, nominative and accusative, we're going to have a unique form, pepal kos, very similar though to pepal kos. And for the plural, nominative and accusative, it's actually going to be the same as the masculine accusative singular right there. So we'll just plug that right in. For the feminine, we have a slightly different stem. Actually, it's very similar, but a little different. Pepau ki. Pepau ki. And we're going to decline this, as we saw, as a first declension noun of, of the feminine persuasion. and Really what that means is after the iota here in the stem, we're not going to have the usual eta, but alphas throughout the declension. So we've seen this conjugation, sorry, this declension many times before. There's nothing really all that special here. So this is the full declension of papal kos, papal kia, papal kos, having stopped the perfect participle. Now, translation. Greek participles can be translated variously. In fact, they're a bit of a, a challenge, especially at first, because they can be translated in so many different ways. Consider the following sentence in Greek. 
first let's let's learn a an idiom that we're going to use in the readings. Karin eka. Karin comes from the feminine noun charis, which you may have heard of. Charis. Um, we get our, our word charisma, things like that from it. It means grace or favor. Um, this particular idi idiom, karin eka, literally to have or hold is grace or favor, uh, can can mean I am grateful, and then with the dative to someone or to something, I suppose. So we're going to need that in this next sentence. Karin eka al po po pepao kate pan palema. So what we have here. This al po is just the really the uh, third person singular uh, personal pronoun he in this case or or him rather, and we're we're repeating the article basically, and then we have here our perfect participle in the dative singular to agree with that al po po pepao kate, and again uh, because the perfect perfect participle is basically an adjective verbal adjective, it's always going to agree with whatever it modifies. And what has has this person we're referring to stopped? He stopped the war. So a, a very literal translation of this, or a more or less literal translation, might be something like this. I'm grateful to him who's stopped the war. I'm grateful to him who's stopped the war. We could, we could express the same thing a little differently in Greek with a relative clause, but this is more more common actually than the relative clause uh, that we use in English. We might also translate this a little more naturally or idiomatically into English as, I'm grateful to him since he's stopped the war. Again, these participles often have an explanatory force. Best of all would probably be, I'm grateful to him for having stopped the war. This would be the most idiomatic way to translate this into English. And we're going to have to translate these participles on a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes uh, a more literal translation will, will do just fine. Other times, bringing out the explanatory force. Other times, really, we're going to have to identify the English idiom to translate uh, the participle into. And that's it on participles for the time being. Perfect participles, the, the endings, you'll want to look at page 41. Thank you very much.